8. Rochelle Ray Zeller In a distressing incident on a late November night in 2021, a youth football game in Wilkes Bar, Pennsylvania took a dark turn when one parent's behavior turned violent. Rochelle Ray Zeller, a 37-year-old woman, was taken into custody under allegations of physically assaulting another woman, stomping on her, and even hitting a man with her vehicle on the football field. The shocking events unfolded at Joe LaRock Football Field on Kayla's Road during an all-star football game, attended by about 100 people. Responding to reports of a large fight breaking out, Sugarloaf Township Police arrived at a chaotic scene, but with no ongoing physical altercations taking place. But several witnesses reported that one woman, identified as Rochelle, dressed in a black coat and gray pants, attacked another innocent woman. The victim was punched in the face, causing her to fall to the ground, and afterwards she had her head stomped on. The same woman, still donning the black coat and gray pants, then proceeded to drive her Mercedes-Benz onto the field and hit a man before quickly leaving the crime scene. When Wilkes Bar police spotted the vehicle parked behind a home on Mayock Street, they identified Rochelle Rezella as the driver and attacker. Zeller reportedly told the police that she was at her son's football game that night but declined to go into any further detail. When Sugarloaf Township Police arrived in her property, Zeller was found wearing the same outfit, with bloodstains on both her clothes and right hand. The front of her car displayed scuff marks consistent with the incident, and mud covered the front tires and wheel wells. Football equipment was also scattered on the rear floor of the car. And despite being questioned by law enforcement, Zella chose not to answer any hard questions. She faced arraignment on charges of aggravated assault, disorderly conduct, reckless endangerment, simple assault, and harassment. Zella remained in custody at the Luzerne County Correctional Facility on a bail of $25,000. Then, in May 2023, she was finally sentenced to anywhere from 6 to 23 months in prison for her part in the violent fight. The incident ruined an innocent all-star youth football game that was hosted by the Valley Chiefs Youth Football Club. The club, distancing themselves from the violent incident, expressed cooperation with authorities and labeled the behavior as disrespectful actions and outlandish. They also clarified that none of their organization members were involved or hurt in the attack. Helping with the incident response were state police and officers from Butler Township, Conningham, and Hazleton, underlining the community's wide efforts to address the unfortunate situation. 7. Sucker Punch In a troubling incident that unfolded after a playoff baseball game at Liberty High School, a Kissimmee man's behavior has highlighted the growing concerns surrounding sportsmanship and respect to children's sporting events. Jorge Apon Gonzalez was arrested for punching an umpire, Reynaldo Mora, in the head after a baseball game that was held between Liberty High School and Harmony High School on April 18, 2023. Surveillance footage from that day captured the moment Apon Gonzalez approached Mora from behind and suddenly struck him on the head. Mora, who officiated the game, was surprised by the attack. He expressed his astonishment later on, stating, all of a sudden, I felt something here, in my temple, knock me down, I don't know. While Mora initially didn't recognize his attacker, he later learned that Apon Gonzalez was the one responsible. Mora believes the punch was connected to a warning he'd issued to Gonzalez's son during the game for unsportsmanlike behavior. He said it has to be, there was nothing else during the game. Sadly though, Mora's experience isn't exactly isolated. According to a survey conducted by the National Association of Sports Officials, almost 47% of surveyed officials out of 17,000 respondents reported feeling unsafe or afraid for their safety thanks to the behavior of rowdy spectators, coaches, players, or administrators. Additionally, about 60% noted a decline in sportsmanship in recent years. Despite the disheartening incident, Mora remains determined to continue officiating games. He maintains a positive approach, emphasizing the importance of having fun while officiating at these events. He believes that if the enjoyment ever diminishes for him, then it'll be time to step away from the role. 
Mora is a proponent of accountability, emphasizing the need for responsibility on all sides, whether it's the officials, players, spectators, or coaches. But the incident has since bogged discussion on how to ensure the safety and respect of all individuals involved in youth sporting events. Upon Gonzalez is now facing criminal charges for battery on a sports official and disruption of a school function, but the outcome of the case has not yet been determined. The incident serves as a reminder of the challenges officials face and the need to foster an environment of respect, sportsmanship, and proper conduct at impressionable children's sports events. 6. Hockey Game Brawl A brawl broke out between the parents of opposing hockey teams at a children's tournament that took place in southern British Columbia in April 2016, with alcohol believed to have played a significant role in the conflict. Despite the idyllic portrayal of minor hockey, the reality of the situation revealed a darker side, including stories of extramarital affairs, fistfights, threats, and intoxicated parents engaging in inappropriate actions. The fight unfolded during a spring hockey tournament in Osoyos, where spectators supporting teams of 10- and 11-year-olds fought in the arena stands. According to RCMP Constable Jason Bader, Harsh insults were exchanged between the parents of both teams, eventually escalating into a physical altercation. Reports suggest that the parents had been drinking and causing disturbances at a nearby resort that night before heading to the arena, where the fight went down. One woman was inadvertently hit in the face by her husband while trying to stop him, although no charges were pressed. Both teams issued statements about the incident. One denied that his parents were drunk and claimed that the fight escalated after a man from the opposite team punched a woman twice, allegedly breaking her nose in the process and giving her a concussion. And the other team expressed a commitment to stopping such incidents in the future, emphasizing the importance of maintaining a safe environment for both players and spectators. The incident shed a bit of light on the less savory aspects of youth sports, exposing the underbelly of behavior that can take place among parents and coaches, despite the idealized image associated with minor hockey. In spite of the controversies and disturbances, the tournament was never sanctioned by BC Hockey, and this limited the extent to which disciplinary actions could be taken. 5. Mass Controversy in January 2021, a 10-year-old and his family member faced some unfortunate consequences in Lebanon, Ohio, when his mother Jennifer Cheney refused to wear her mask properly at her son's youth basketball game. The family's involvement in King's Basketball Association, a part of the Cincinnati Premier Youth Basketball League, was disrupted by Jennifer's refusal to cover her nose up with her mask. During a game held between King's Basketball Association and Sycamore, Jennifer Cheney live-streamed the event on Facebook for all of her family and friends who were unable to attend thanks to the COVID-19 restrictions. She wore her mask under her nose, which prompted a spectator from the opposing team to approach her about the face covering. Later, another man came up to her and asked about her mask, to which Jennifer cited a medical condition as her reason for wearing the mask that way. The situation quickly escalated, and the league's president Ben Goodyear stepped in, instructing her to leave the gym. This led to a heated exchange. The family was then told that they were getting expelled from the league. The Cheneys were emotionally affected by the incident, especially their young son Connor, who was in tears due to the confusion around the events. Despite the family's corroboration of Jennifer's medical condition, the league remained firm in their decision to expel them. The Cincinnati Premier Youth Basketball League's COVID-19 rules stated that face coverings were mandatory for spectators. And the league president clarified that they do not grant medical exemptions. The family gave evidence of Jennifer's medical condition, attested by a physician's note, but the league still maintained its decision. In contrast, Ohio's Department of Health guidelines acknowledge medical exemptions for face coverings. So, was the Basketball League justified in its response to this incident? Well, that depends on who you ask. 4. Melbourne vs. West Melbourne 
In October 2022, a disturbing scuffle erupted among parents at a 12 and under youth football game between teams from Melbourne and West Melbourne. The conflict, which was captured on video, unfolded on the sidelines and quickly escalated onto the actual field. Shockingly, children at the event were caught up in the middle of the chaos, with some pleading for their parents to stop fighting and others being urged to get away from the commotion. Amid all of the violence, reports came out that a young cheerleader was actually trampled by the battling parents, although the exact extent of her injuries is unclear. Despite the upsetting scene, there were no reports of law enforcement intervening or arrests being made. After the fight, the Atlantic Coast Youth Athletics Association ACYAA, decided to take action. ACYAA presidents issued suspensions to all individuals involved in the altercation, barring them from future participation in any ACYAA activities, including practices, for the remainder of the 2022 season. These suspensions were in effect from October 17, 2021 to October 29, 2022. The ACYAA released a statement addressing the incident and reinforcing the importance of following the organization's strict code of conduct policy. The statement expressed concern about recent situations escalating on the field and spilling onto the sidelines, emphasizing that team sidelines should never dump onto the field since it contributes to tension and confusion for the kids. As of October 16, 2022, any future incidents of a similar nature would result in teams being suspended for the rest of the season, with the league being placed on probation for the 2023 season. The ACYAA also issued a verbal warning to all leagues about infractions related to the code of conduct and social media policy, emphasizing the need to prioritize a safe environment for children to play the sports they love. 3. Father Tackles Referee In 2022, an enraged parent who tackled a soccer referee during his son's game in Roseville was sentenced to a year of probation and ordered to attend anger management courses. To this day, he remains prohibited from attending youth sporting events. 35-year-old Vincent Robles Jr., a Sacramento resident, was also told to maintain a distance of at least 360 feet from the victim for a year and give restitution for the referee's lost wages. He was handed a 30-day jail sentence, which can be served through alternative sentencing. The incident took place on October 30, 2021, when Robles charged onto the field during an under-16 match, forcefully brought down the game's referee and berated him. This confrontation was captured on video and garnered significant attention from the public. Robles subsequently pleaded no contest to battery on a sports official. Placer County District Attorney's Office emphasized that justice is served through multiple channels in the criminal legal process, aiming to hold individuals accountable while also offering necessary assistance. This case underscores the significance of maintaining basic decency, especially during youth sports events. After the attack, the coach of the team was suspended by the NorCal Premier Soccer Organization for not properly managing the spectators' behavior. Additionally, the team was barred from competing again until June 2022 as a consequence of the incident. 2. Motherly Advice A California woman, Ladera Shanti Hunt, has been ordered to write an apology letter and pay over $9,000 in restitution after she shouted from the stands for her daughter to punch an opponent during a basketball game, an incident that was shared widely on social media. In November 2021, during a youth basketball game at the MAP Sports Facility in Garden Grove, Hunt's daughter had a confrontation with a rival player. Hunt yelled, you better hit her for that, and seconds later, the rival player fell down to the floor. As a result, Hunt was charged with contributing to the delinquency of a minor and battery. The Orange County District Attorney's Office also revealed that a county superior court judge granted Hunt misdemeanor diversion on the strict condition that she fulfill a set of requirements over the next two years. These conditions included writing several apologies to the victim, 
her parents and both basketball teams, as well as paying restitution and completing some anger management classes before being allowed to attend basketball games. She was also required to stay away from the victim in the future. The incident happened during a game between the SoCal Blaze and Dream Academy. In a viral video, a 14-year-old player from Dream Academy missed a three-point shot and fell down to the floor, followed by another player, Lauren Hamm, who was later identified by her mother. After getting up, the Dream Academy player suddenly lunged toward Lauren and hit her in the head, leading to a concussion. Orange County District Attorney Todd Spitzer condemned Hunt's actions, emphasizing that youth sports should promote discipline, teamwork, and fair play, not violence. He described Hunt's actions as reprehensible, noting that telling her own daughter to engage in violence transformed her into someone willing to hurt another person. After the incident, the father of the Dream Academy player Corey Benjamin a former first-round draft pick for the Chicago Bulls, expressed disappointment in his daughter's behavior, claiming that it didn't actually reflect the values of his family or the spirit of sportsmanship that basketball requires. He apologized for her actions and expressed his commitment to her improvement. 1. Catholic School Volleyball A violent fight outside a Catholic school involving parents during an 8th grade girls' volleyball game ended in charges of assault against two adults. The incident happened on September 27, 2019, in the parking lot outside the St. Susanna School Gymnasium. It transpired after one parent left the gym due to becoming upset over a call that was made during the game. The victim, 44-year-old Raymond Phipps, was then hit from behind and thrown down to the ground, prompting his wife to call 911. She described the assault to dispatchers, indicating that her husband had been jumped by the attackers in the parking lot. Gerald Gertz allegedly punched and kicked the victim in both the head and face, while Sarah Hadfield reportedly joined in by stomping on defenseless Phipps. Hadfield was arrested at the scene, while Gertz initially left before turning himself in later on in the Mason Police Department. In a phone call with authorities, Gertz argued about the situation and eventually decided to surrender himself. The victim's injuries were so severe that he couldn't speak or write, preventing him from giving a statement to the police. Fortunately, though, no children were harmed in the fight. The St. Susanna School took the incident very seriously, and both Gertz and Hanfield were suspended from the Youth Sports League and barred from stepping foot on St. Susanna grounds. The accused were then released on bond and were scheduled for arraignment shortly after. The church officers declined to comment on the incident. The next year, in November 2020, Gertz was sentenced to two to three years in prison for felonious assault. Hatfield, on the other hand, only received two days behind bars for her part in the fight. If you were upset by a call made during your child's sporting event, would you lash out at the officials, or would you keep your thoughts to yourself to not interfere with your kid's game? Let us know what you think in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.